Welcome, 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 my darlings, welcome to this Sunday evening special little mini masterclass, which I'm so excited about. Um, you are so welcome if you are joining me live to say hello in the comments. It's always really nice to see who who is here. As always on the live sessions that I offer, I really invite you to make any comments, to ask any questions, to write anything that is coming up for you as we go through this session. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to to answer. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, Nicola, my darling. Mwah. Hmm. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, again, give us a hashtag replay. You can say hello, put your name in, and also just let me know any thoughts you have about this particular special little masterclass for you this evening. So I'm incredibly excited. I'm very dolled up, as you can see, because I've literally just finished. It's been a very busy day. I have finished doing an incredible day with a friend of mine. We've been collaborating and being very creative around the city. All will be revealed soon, but that's why I'm very blinged up. But I have got lots of gold on. You know, we like a little bit of gold. <sighs> so what are we doing today? This session is going to be all about the love languages of money. Woohoo! The love languages of money. So first of all, before we get into this, can you let me know if you are watching this? Um, is the sound okay? Can you hear me? I've had a bit of a issue with my little microphone. I think it's time to invest in a new one. So I'm going microphoneless today. So hopefully you can hear me okay. But let's get straight into it. So love languages, love languages. Let me know if you've heard of love languages. It's been quite a big thing, I think, for probably for the last decade, actually. Yay, thank you, sweets. I, I can remember about 10 years ago, actually hearing about love languages. It was all the thing, wasn't it? I even had the book. I Bless, I meant to have a look to see who the guy was who had put these together. So thank you, Mr. Guy, who I can't remember your name. So love languages came about and they're really, really fascinating. Anything I think that helps us to explore the dynamics in our relationships is absolute pure gold. Why the hell not? Absolutely, why the hell not? I love all that shit. Astrology, Enneagram, human design. I think there is something in all of this. But the love languages, what I found really fascinating for me was the more I understood my own love language, and then the more I understood my partner's love language and where perhaps they differed and where they were the same, it actually really supported and helped in our relationship. Really fascinating. So I like love languages. I think they're really helpful. Over the past, certainly over the past few weeks, but particularly over the last year, I have been exploring the energetics around money. So just as a little kind of overview, I work with Eros. That is the, um, the, the form, the clay that I like to play with as a creative life coach. Eros very simply is, it's everything. It is the essence of desire that moves through us. It's our life force itself. It is love. It is the aliveness that we can feel in our bodies. It is full presence. I was very surprised working with Eros. It's absolute full embodied presence and connectivity. And I'm really feeling that in my body as I speak. And we have these, what I see as three main sources of where we connect with and play, very important, play out with. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, you made it. Great. Um, where we play out with, with these forces in our life as a, as a human being. One of those is our creative energy. 
What do we do with the sparks, the inspiration, the ideas, the excitement for things, the projects we want to do, the absolute bonkers ideas that we might come up with? Okay, Our creative energy is one of the ways we play with this, what I call currency of our life force and source. The second place where we can work with um, Eros, our, our, our life force energy, is with what we do with our sexual energy, okay? What we, how we relate to our pleasure, how much we allow ourselves our pleasure, how much we let ourselves receive our pleasure. So this is another area that I love to explore and play with. But there is a third place, and this is, as I say, something that I've been investing a lot of my energy and time and curiosity into over this last year, and that is our relationship with money. Money is literally its currency. Now, when we think about it, we don't have to think that hard about it. Money really does weave through every single aspect of our life, whether we're focused on money or not. You just look around you of where you are now. Everything around you will be connected in some way to money, whether that's gifts that you've been given, whether that's things that you've invested into yourself to make your space the space that you want, the clothing that you're wearing, maybe having your hair done, maybe if you're wearing kind of makeup, if you have any jewelry going on, the home that you're in costs money, the electricity, as we know, costs money. So there's a lot of areas in our life where that weaves in. We go and have maybe a coffee, we buy a sandwich, we need to get our, our food, we get a bus or a train to go and visit people or to go to work even. We go to work to earn money. We create things, have our own business to earn money. We cannot get away from the fact that money is in everything. It is one of the sources that we can connect with to enliven and play with and manifest the life that it is that we want to create. Now, this is also a topic that is very edgy and I love, love, love being edgy. I love playing with a taboo. I love being subversive, being mischievous. For me, these are is one of the main incredible empowerment tools that we have to to completely shift certain dynamics that are playing out for us in our life that we're stuck in okay being subversive bringing that trickster energy playing with alchemy and magic it is just uber delicious i think however a lot of us have so many stories around our relationship with money we don't even think about it as a relationship with money per se, but it is. We are in relationship to every aspect. We are in relationship to our creativity, we are in relationship to our sexual energy. We are in relationship to how our financial flow is in our life. The other thing I wanted to say here is that even speaking about money, coming on here today to go. I'm going to talk about money in a playful and fun, but hopefully really inspiring way that you can take some or all of this and apply it immediately to your life. Even talking about money is quite taboo, isn't it? I mean, do you talk about money with your, your friends? Do you talk about money with your partner? I'm guessing if you're married or you live with your partner, your long-term partner, that is a subject that is brought up. Do you talk about money with your parents, your children? And what do you talk about money? In what we respect do you talk about money? In what regard? How do you talk about money? Do you have enough money? Do you never have enough money? Is money for you something that... Ugh, you know, you shouldn't really be thinking about or dreaming about because, you know, you're all kind of like maybe spiritual or you're above that or, you know, you're not playing the rules of society. Do you secretly really fucking want to be filthy rich? You want to be a millionaire? You have dreams of yourself lying on a yacht? If that's your, your thing or a beautiful beach somewhere? Are you afraid of money? 
Does money excite you? Does it scare you? Vast. It is the such a vast arena and it is fascinating to explore. Now, for the purposes of this um, masterclass, we're going to just focus on one aspect regarding our relationship with money. So already, I just want to ask you, what is your relationship with money? You know, do you speak about it? Are you comfortable? Is it something you try and avoid? Is it something you're always trying to chase? Do you see it as this, you know, root of all evil, which apparently the full quote is lack of money is the root of all evil, which is very interesting. There's a whole connection with poverty and mental health. There's, yeah, there's so many links in that way. So we're going to be quite ridiculous and mischievous and a little bit saucy with money. And we're going to imagine that you and money, you've got to a point where you realize that you need some help. And as is very common, and I think is a bloody amazing idea, in a relationship, when we realize we need some help in our relationship, we want to be together, you're important to me, but this isn't working as it is, you might go and see a marriage counsellor. You might go and see a therapist together. Be in a space where you both get to be heard. You get to be in a space where you are invited to really listen and respond to what your partner has to say. And you're being witnessed and held in that. So imagine how it would be if you and money were to decide to go to see a counsellor because it's just not you're not happy you and money aren't happy together you've got some grumbles you know you've got some things that you want to kind of just iron out with money you've got some things you need to tell money the thing is you might have a lot of ideas about money in your life and how you speak about money in your life, to yourself, to others. But have you ever thought about how money speaks about you? This is so fascinating. We talk about, I don't trust money. Well, does money trust you? I never have enough money, it's never there for me. Are you there for money? I don't think money really loves me. It just disappears as soon as I have it. Well, do you love money? Do you allow money to stay? Or do you push it away? Do you listen to it? Do you pay attention to it? It's not just a one-way thing. And this might be a bit like, what's she talking about? Money can't speak. Tell you what, it really does. And we're going to use the love languages as the format to explore. So, sound good? <laughs> I think it sounds pretty fun if you ask me. So we're going to um, go into our love languages for money. So even if you're not familiar with love languages, don't worry. I'm going to speak about them as we good, good as we go through. So there are five love languages. Okay, and we're going to start with the first one, which is acts of service. Acts of service. Now, what does that mean in your relationship with money? Let's see. If we look at it from money's point of view, acts of service could be, probably is, they pay that bill. Money takes care of your bills. It pays your rent or your mortgage. Your money will pay for your water bill, your electricity bill, your phone bill. Sure, they're not sexy, but money is looking after you by doing these acts of service. Acts of service is one of the love languages that we can not realize is a loving thing that someone is doing for us. Money is paying for the things we want. That coffee that you feel like, acts of service, money will pay for it. 
Yeah, you want some new trainers? Acts of service, money will pay for it. You want to get your hair done, your nails done, and so on. Not only does money pay those kind of bills, but also money will pay for that mini break that you want to have with your mate that you've not seen for ages. Serving that time together to connect with your friend. Money pays for childcare. Pays that bill, childcare. So that perhaps you and your partner can go and have a date night. Money also pays for little treats or gifts for loved ones or someone that you know that might need it or just because for no reason whatsoever. Just because you know that will surprise somebody in a really beautiful way. Acts of service towards, in service to love. So what is your money in service to? So you can look at it from that side. The other thing, money supports independent creative businesses and artists, acts of service. You love somebody's piece of work, a pottery or their book, you'll use your money to buy and then supporting these artists. So it's a huge one. Money plays a massive role in acts of service. Let's flip it though. What do you do in acts of service and money? And is this strong for you? Or is this an area perhaps you need to look at more? The ways that we can be in acts of service to money is, again, it's very practical. This isn't the very sexy one, I don't think. Is we, you know, we do our taxes. We make sure that there's a certain amount that we know is ours, certain amount that needs to be paid. We're going to look after that. Maybe we make sure that money is being invested in the right thing. So is the bank that you put your money in the right place for it to be? so that it's, it's supported and maybe tended to, and maybe there's good interest there. Do you invest in certain things? Maybe it's in art, maybe it's in cryptocurrency, maybe it's in gold, maybe it's just in a savings account for a rainy day. But you're also protecting and looking out for your money as your money is protecting and looking out for you. Does this make sense? How are you being an acts of service to money when money probably very clearly is being in acts of service for you. This is a love language. And it might be going forwards, if you do those things, that you do them with a little bit more awareness as you're sorting out your tax return, as you're working out your next investment or savings. There's a part of you that can be very like, I'm doing this because I love money. I respect money. I want to serve money in a way that I can to protect it and look after it. So let me know how that, how that lands for you. Acts of service. It's interesting, isn't it? And it's very true, that one. But are we aware? Do we acknowledge that money does love me because it's helping me to have my dinner, to be warm this evening? Sure, it might not be the bigger things, but you have to start with what is right now. Yeah, it does, isn't it? It's interesting. That one's more easier to kind of grasp because it kind of, you know, makes sense. So let's go on to the second love language we're going to look at. This is a great one. This is one of mine, actually. One of mine is, and I need this from my partner. <laughs> he knows this, and if he forgets, and it goes, you know, into a few months, I kind of just go, oh, you know that I like, you know, I like this, so can you, you know... It's not a big thing for him, but it is for me. Yay, hi darling, you're here. Mwah. Great, so we're going on to the second love language. First one was acts of service. The second one is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. See, in my relationship, I like to hear those words of affirmation. I like to hear how beautiful I am. I like to hear how much I am my partner's queen. Told you I've trained him well with these things. He knows what to say. I like to be appreciated. I like to hear words. That is something that works for me. <clears throat> now, as I say, not necessarily so for my partner. That's not one of his um, love languages, but it is for me. So if we look at money, this is a huge one. 
How do you talk about money behind its back? Probably for a lot of us, we're quite abusive about money behind its back. We're probably telling people how useless money is. We're probably telling ourselves. We're probably very likely saying that they're not enough as they are in your life. They could do better. We might be saying stuff to them that's born out of a kind of frustration. I imagine how money must feel to have that being berated all the time. I don't have enough, I can't love. We speak for money, don't we? But have you ever stopped and wondered, well, what would money say about me? Would money say, mm, she or he's, you know, they're, they're a bit tough, really. You know, they're actually really tough. They're not very soft towards me, not very kind. Does money go, I'm a bit scared of them because whatever I do is never enough for them. How would money speak about you? Would money go, mm, she's not very trustworthy. She says one thing and then does another, you know, doesn't look after me. There's a bit of neglect going on. How often do you praise money? It's a funny thing, isn't it? How often do you appreciate money? How often do you get excited about money? Even things like, you know, you're going out for a meal. You go and pay for your meal. Maybe it's been a lovely evening. Maybe it's a friend's birthday. You're just catching up with somebody or going out with your partner or you're taking your mum out, whatever. When you go and pay, is there any sense of appreciation? You know, as you tap your card, thank you, thank you, money. That was really nice. I got to spend a really nice time with people. Or oh, thank you, money. I've um, bought a lovely um, thermals <laughs> so I can be warm over winter. I really appreciate that you were able to help me get these. Really, really appreciate. Do you tell money that you love her? Or are you going, oh, you're really losing the plot, Heidi. What are you talking about? Do you tell money that you love her? Money likes you to talk to her like a lover. Seriously. For you to get excited by its presence in your life. You know, a quid that you find in a pocket of your, of your jeans. That 20 quid that you find in that old bag that you've not used for ages. Money loves it. It goes all like, ooh, -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Oh, you know, maybe likes it really. Money is quite flirty. You know, it gets around, doesn't it? We know this. Money is a bit of a whore. Can we get on board with that energy of money? There's a lot of sexual energy when it comes to money. It is potent. It is a fucking force. You know, think about how powerful money is in the world. Think about what... It would mean to you, I've been exploring this for the last few days with different friends, what it would mean for you to be rich. What does rich mean to you? It is empowered. It is freedom. Strong. Money holds that as an energy. It represents that as an energy. I do a money dance every time I receive no uh, money no matter how little. That's great. I found 50 cents and did my dance called Money is My Honey Dance. Oh my God. I so want you to do a video of your money is your honey dance. I would love, love, love to see that. I find it much harder when everything is online. It doesn't seem real. Mm, just numbers on the screen. I'm much better at being present with it when it's cash. Really hear that. I wonder if there's some way of you know, if we're going to be a bit saucy with money, this is a really good one to be teasing with money. You know how, like, some couples like to play dress-up? You know, like, I'm going to meet you at a bar later, but you're a stranger sat at the bar and I don't know you. Maybe you could play money as dressing up and as a stranger when it appears online. It's like, oh, it's cash, but <laughs> they're, um, you know, they've gone all digital on me. Ooh, how naughty. I wonder what they can do. I wonder what they'll say. I wonder if they've got a new voice. 
I find it much harder when everything is online. Doesn't seem really, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I can't wait to see your video. Do post it into the group. It'll be absolutely wonderful. Many is it, honey. It's so good, isn't it? It just so rhymes with honey. But it is. So starting to talk to money as if it's your lover, how much you appreciate it, how much you want it. Do you want it? Do you want that money? <laughs> how it makes you feel? <gasps> what are you going to do with it? Seriously, try it. Just try it and see how it is. Even if you just feel completely silly. Silly is good. Money likes to be playful and also then you'll be in a more engagement with the energy of money. It's just a symbol. But you're being playful. Money likes that. It's going to come out of hiding. The thing is, money's going to be more relaxed. It's going to be more relaxed if you play with it and talk to it nicely than it is if you're screaming at it or telling it off and not being what you want it to be, isn't it? Like, it's the same for any of us. So when money's more relaxed, if money's appreciated, you know what they say, what you appreciate, appreciates. Yeah? So that is our second love language, words of affirmation. Um, and just a little thing with that, you could write a love letter to money. When was the last time you wrote a love letter to money? Leave little love notes in your purse or in your pocket to find. Yeah, you can be really creative. You can be really dirty. I promise you, money likes it when you get dirty with it. So, you know, let your imagination roam free with this. And if you do get really down and dirty with money, do let me know how it went. <laughs> My slight perf. So, i love to know all the details. Thank you very much. So that is our second love language. How does that one sound? Does that sound exciting for you? Does it sound a bit like, oh, I don't know about that. Is there resistance there? Let me know what, what, what's coming up. The third one is interesting. The third love language is physical touch. So for me in my relationship, Physical touch is, is a love language for both of us. We've always been like that. We've always very touchy from day one. That's kind of people that we are. We're touchy with our friends. Um, some people aren't like that or it's not important to them. So what does that mean for money, though, if we look at that in that way? For me, this is about the senses. Our senses are a big part of our ability to receive life that's how we receive life isn't it through our senses that's what we've been given you know what we're visually taking in what we can hear what we smell what we taste what we feel on our skin the art of receptivity so a huge question to ask is how good am I at receiving? It's is huge. Because for many of us, we're not very good at receiving. You know? And a very simple way to check this out is when someone gives you a compliment, what do you do? Do you let it in? Do you really feel that? Let it land? Sometimes it can take a little bit of time. It's not immediate. Or, as a lot of us do, Bat it off very quickly. Oh, no, this, you know, this whole thing. That's usual. Isn't it? I only got it, I got it 50p in a charity shop. My God, how many times do we do that? Oh, I've had this for 20 years. Or, oh, thanks, I need my, you know. On a mine recently, I've been noticing people go, I like your hair. I'm like, oh, yeah, it needs cutting. I'm not had it cut for ages. How many times do we bat off what is being offered to us? So the physical touch one for me is around developing a deeper relationship to our senses, to receiving in. And particularly those things that have that element of wealth or luxury or richness. So that could be when you get into a hot bubble bath, especially in this horrible, bleeding, cold, wintry evenings. Can we receive that pleasure connected so much to pleasure? Drinking our coffee, the first sip of coffee, the smell, 
the smell of our child's neck or our lover's neck for that matter. Flowers, the visual beauty of flowers, can we take time to really see? The clothing we put on, you know, we put something really beautiful on our skin, can we feel that? What about oils? What about just our own touch? That's richness. That's wealth. Money likes it when we connect with pleasure. Money actually is a bit of a pleasure whore. Money fucking loves pleasure. Think about it. Yeah, it does all the practical looking after us stuff. That's so important. But money wants to give us pleasure. You want to have that hour massage, um, four-handed massage on a beach in Bali with flower petals and sounds of whatever, the ocean in the background and lovely wafts of beautiful local incense. Money wants you to have pleasure. You want to go on that gorgeous retreat in the mountains, that luxury retreat with that swimming pool and you can swan around in fancy sarongs and have beautiful food and learn the most amazing things. Money wants you to have that. You want to do this course that's going to help you to learn this and support your life and make you feel really happy. Money wants for you to have that. But we have to be able to receive in the first place. Otherwise, we're not going to realize when money is giving us the things that are actually making us go, mmm, delicious. So money and pleasure are connected. So really start to explore, expanding into your senses. Explore your relationship to the art of receiving. Let's have a look. Thinking to get $100 in ones and learn it while I sell pleasure. Yes, girl, I've done this. It is hot as anything. It is, I tell you, there's something about money and the body and the eroticness. Eroticness? of that 100% right story about myself selling out huge often all things I do with the money I own receive yes this is going to come into um, um, one of these that were that the fifth the fifth one actually we're going to do it feels like shit when you compliment someone they react that way that's it now imagine how money feels yeah mm-hmm there you go interesting isn't it Let's move on to our fourth love language. Our fourth love language is gifts. Maybe you know somebody who, they're just amazing at gifts. Like, they just know. They're not somebody that's obviously just kind of bought that, but doesn't, yeah, it's nice, but yeah, okay. Or buys you something that goes immediately in your cupboard with gifts to be re-gifted. I can't be the only one that has a cupboard of things, of gifts that are not quite me. Thank you, thank you. And I'm just going to give them to somebody else. Gifts. Gifts obviously are connected to generosity, giving. Generosity. What is your generosity like? So if we're looking at receiving, somebody has mentioned here about feels like shit when you compliment someone and they react that way. It, it, it goes both ways. That's a giving. Yeah, that's gifting. So what is it like to gift? And gifting is very much about knowing that you are generosity. You are generosity. Life is generosity. It's endless, unlimited, fast potential. Sometimes we know that and we feel that. Sometimes we forget and we tip over into scarcity, not enough, and contraction. But life is generosity. So if life is generosity, money is generosity. Giving is generosity. But when we give, two things. The first thing is we have to be, our well has to be full in order to give. Yeah, we're not looking to martyr ourselves. Yeah, so there's a looking after ourselves. Very important, it's a self-respect. And then we give from that well. What do we give? Maybe we give time. Time is money. Maybe we give attention. Maybe we give support. Maybe we give actual gifts. 
where do we give how do we give maybe we gift in the way that you know maybe we have a business and we do voluntary work or we we do pro rata work and that's part of it maybe we give to being a board on a, a particular charity generosity for something that we care about it is this flavor of generosity outwards and towards yourself how generous are you towards yourself and again i'm not just talking about things that you can buy we're looking at all of these different resources that we have it's all connected how generous are you to yourself You're generous with how much sleep you give yourself. Are you generous with the way you talk about yourself? Are you generous with buying yourself things that you actually would really like? And I'm obviously not talking about putting yourself in a really financial shit to do that, you know? But I'm talking maybe you buy yourself a book because you really want to read that or, or a magazine because you've not bought one for ages or nail polish because you're just feeling like it. Or you buy yourself lunch out or you buy yourself a, a, a course, or you buy yourself a new coat, or gifting yourself for no reason, simply because, and I'm gonna get all cheesy and L'Oreal on you here, because you're worth it, worth. There are so many ways we speak about the energetics of money in our everyday language, and we don't realize what we're saying to ourselves. How are you generous towards yourself? I'm a gift-giving sorceress, says Julie. Love her. Gift-giving sorceress. Beautiful. But it is making sure that it is, we're not giving ourselves away. We have enough self-honor. We don't abandon self. Same with money. We take care of ourselves first. We have to be selfish first. And then we give what we're able to from that place. This is very important. We stay then in our own alignment. Same with money then. When we're giving money. We keep a sense of alignment with that. We're not going to give everything away and leave ourselves in the shit and be like, oh shit, what happened? I've exhausted my funds. No, we look after ourselves first and we then look and go, right, how can I be generous? How can I be open to my life? So we're working with generosity as well as the one before of receiving. How generous are you towards yourself? I'm curious to know. What does that mean to you? What does that look like? And it's honoring those ways that you're generous towards yourself. When you notice them, you can then go, thank you to yourself. Thank you. Nice. Last one. Our last love language is quality time. It's one of my love languages. It's also one of my partners as well. Quality time. Not quality street, but you might be munching on your quality street already. Quality time. Now, one of our most valuable, priceless resources that every single one of us has is our attention. And we even use the phrase paying attention, don't we? We use it in those monetary terms, paying attention. But interesting. Attention is the ultimate power. It's one of the ultimate powers we have and it's one of the ultimate powers to work with money alongside appreciation and all the other things that I've spoken of. Paying attention. So, quality time with money, what would that look like? One of the things you can do is go on a money date. So you're gonna go on a date with money. What that means is you're just hanging out with money. So you might go to Harvey Nichols, very expensive store, and browse for the afternoon. 
we might try on some Le Boutons because spray yourself with a nice perfume admire the bags try on some jewelry try on some clothing you're just hanging out with money like with you, you would with a friend you might go for lunch with money where would money want to go where should we go together where do you fancy let's go and try that that, that nice place even if we just go and have a coffee in that nice place together on a little money day it's really nice Maybe money wants to go to an art gallery because it really enjoys beauty. Maybe money wants to go and see a film. So you and money, it's different to an artist day. That's very particularly serving creative energy. Serving money is going, what are the kind of environments or the, the aesthetic that would really, you know, can you imagine your money day as foreplay? Just going to hang out, teasing each other, seducing each other with suggestions. Another way that you can spend quality time with money is daydreaming what you and money could do together. Where would you go together? What would you do? Who would you meet? Daydreaming. Money loves to daydream with you. It's teasing again. Envisioning a future together. What future are you creating? Have you spent time with money to go, what future shall we create together? Money's input's important. It has a voice. Don't speak on behalf of money. Let it tell you. It might tell you things that you're like, oh, really? Money wants you to, like, I don't know dress as a this is terrible it's coming out my mouth dress as a russian hooker for the day because it just feels like it would be kind of fun to feel that energy dress up it's kind of a bit of a true story but that's for another time yeah quality time with money let it take you to things that you want to do the other thing of quality time with money is allow it to invest in the things like classes or workshops or retreats or holidays where you can really feel the essence of money with you maybe it's going for like for a little city break or for a day out somewhere and you just walk through your day imagining you have money with you how would that feel how would that change things if you were hanging out with money teasing getting juicy getting turned on together Does money have to spend itself in order for you to get turned on by and love your relationship with money? Interesting, it's an energetic, it's a currency, it is there for you. Remember, it wants you to have pleasure, it wants to look after you, but it also wants to play with you. This is really, really, really huge. The other thing is to really look at, you know, a quality time could be sitting down and really looking at your budget together. That might be the non-sexy one, but again, in all relationships, it's not all fucking like Hollywood movies, is it? There is these things you have to be really serious together. You might have to compromise around things because money's going, actually, I need this for this month. And you're going, no, I want that. And then you have to sit down and go, well, is there somewhere we can compromise? Or maybe this month, okay, I'm hearing you, you need that from me. Maybe the month after we can look at, maybe I can have this. And where you're investing money. Because where you're investing is also what you're giving your time to. So you're saying this matters, this is important. I'm going to put attention. Attention means to tend to, to care for. So essentially, it's caring for money quality time it's caring for money being interested in what money has to say not ignoring it not taking it for granted but taking it seriously not too seriously but seriously enough that you fucking find them really interesting to be with as an energy and you're interested in how that energy works with you does it have particular seasons money with you does it have particular cycles does it need something from you that it's never 
been able to ask you for because you've not sat down and given it your attention to listen to and to receive. It, again, it might seem like, what are you talking about? Or it might be like, fuck, this is really obvious. I'm always going to be in relationship with money. We all are because the, even if you like live in the middle of nowhere, there's going to be the things around you. There's going to be some things that probably need money. Even if it's just the clothes on your back, unless you're like, you know, you spin your own yar uh, yarn and make your own clothing. And maybe some people really do that. Completely, completely um, disconnected from these things of society. But most of us, really, probably all of us, especially that are listening here, we are in a relationship with money. So isn't it time we actually turn and went, hello, my name is so-and-so. I know that we've been together a long time and I'm really sorry, but I've actually taken no fucking notice of you and I've been like a real bitch about you and I'd like to make amends and I'd like us to have actually a really good relationship and maybe like, you know, have fun together and build a respect and grow together and dream together and have a vision of life together and I'd like to know how I can support you. I would love, love, love to know how all this is landing. <laughs> it's gone a bit quiet now in the comments. Isn't it cool? Isn't it interesting? And even if you just do one of those things, just see what starts to shift for you. And like I said right at the beginning, these are the same energetics as working with our creative energy and our sexual energy. And they will impact. You work on one, it will impact the others. So it doesn't matter which you work on, really. They will. It will impact the others. I absolutely guarantee that. That it's the same energy. It is just manifesting and coming out like tubes in different ways. There's creativity. There's your sexual energy. There's your, your money, your financial flow, your currency. We empower ourselves when we get real, when we open our eyes, and when... We take responsibility. So how responsible are you for your relationship with money? Is it time for a new one? So please let me know your thoughts on any of this. And if you have any like other ideas that come to you around any of these, so I'll just run through them again. Acts of service. Words of affirmation. Physical touch gifts and quality time. They are the five love languages and we've been looking at how we can use those with money. Oh, money might run off with someone else. Oh. But, and I'm hearing that around, okay, no sexy urges or thoughts. But again, we look to relationship. Are we always feeling sexy for our partner in relationship? No. Not in a real relationship. It will ebb and flow. Some days we are, in weeks, months, we are incredibly creative. We just have ideas coming out of our ears. Just shut up, brain, and we're on it, we're on it. And then we have this this time when it's like, are all my ideas gone? Am I, I'm just not really inspired. Nothing's really happening. Same with our, our sexual energy. It's the same with money as well. So we trust those times where it might seem like nothing is happening. Maybe they're the times we lean in a bit closer and have some more of those serious conversations or daydream and make the plans together. And then trusting that, as with all of these forces, that will start to juice up again. Because it will, absolutely. Oh, hi, gorgeous. Hi, Jackie. It's definitely igniting your curiosity. Yeah, it is. And this is the thing I really always implore and invite you with any of these things that I offer is simply be curious. Curiosity is one of the soul, it's a soul tool. It's one of the best tools we have in life is to allow curiosity. So even with what you just said, Julie, allow the curiosity around that of like, okay, so do you want money to run off with somebody else? Maybe you just need to tell money you're scared of that you know how, how can we have these these conversations that we might 
imagine having with a partner if we, were, we had the same things going on and let that vulnerability be there if that's the case let the desires be there give them a voice remember going right back to the beginning of this you're in a, a, a counseling session together because you're together you're always going to be together you want to be together but all the fears and the doubts and the worries and the you know they're not seeing each other and listening to each other and hearing all of this kind of stuff will have been going on so I'm going to um, just share something with you. I'm going to put this in the comments as well. Um, I have something to offer to you. And I am, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. I've been playing with and exploring the energetics of money, like I say, for about a year now. And the shifts that I have been experiencing in my relationship with money has been profound. And, um, <laughs> so tell money that, tell that, Julie, tell it that you want it, to, uh, you know, I don't know what Cousin Mel is, but it sounds interesting. Tell it you want all those things for it. There's your excitement. There's the sexiness is the, in the excitement. Tell money what you want to do with it. Get excited with money. Mm -hmm. So, on the basis of all this living embodied shifts, and that is honestly brought so much power and freedom and so much more into my life. It's expanded things in an incredible way. I am offering a month, it's a month program, it's once a week, and it's called The Money Keys. I know, that's it, it's in the name. I just thought, fuck it, I'm not even gonna, um, I was gonna put the um, info in here. This is, it's part of the big Erotic Keys program that I am a third of the way through now with the lovely people on it. We've done the, the, the Desire Keys and we're now about to move into the Money Keys. Now, why would you want this, okay? For me, the fundamental thing about this, what it will give you, is the freedom from being caught up in the beliefs about money that are limiting who you are and who you are becoming okay this work what we're going to look at oh i'm going to i'll tell you about that now so we're going to explore the relationship aspect of money a lot deeper and you're going to be set things to do you're going to go off on money dates you're going to have all sorts of things that you're going to explore you're going to have this whole month to do this How would it be to know that you are living life in a love affair with money? How would that even just shift things, just even from where you are now? Even if you're like, well, at the moment, I'm sat at one end of the couch, they're on the other, we're both like that, we're not talking to each other, we haven't talked to each other for years. That can be repaired. And how would it be to shift your focus because let's face it, and this is a big part of what I discovered, it was sobering as fuck. I've spent so much time, or I have spent, focused on money. And when I saw that, it blew me away. It's like, fuck. No wonder money can't breathe. No wonder it's not getting any bigger. No wonder it's stuck. No wonder. Oh my God. It's that same thing again. Imagine someone just staring at it the whole time and like looking at the, their watch and muttering all these things about you the whole fucking time. You'd be totally frozen. You wouldn't have any flow. You wouldn't know how to play. You wouldn't be relaxed. We're going to look at shifting this dynamic. And how would it be to realize that you can live in this generosity, not from a woo-woo place. I ain't fucking woo-woo, that's for sure. Those of you that know me know that. But from a place where suddenly money is flowing and it's not necessarily you're doing anything differently but you are from the inside out a big problem is we do you know a lot of money affirmations we look at the money stories we grew up with blah 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 and nothing changes and a big part of this and this is what we're going to look at very big part if we do not have the capacity to bear more more pleasure more receiving more time, more praise, more appreciation, all of these things, 
we don't have the capacity our nervous system will react i've had this so many times and i had it again this week around something that i wanted i asked for got the price for it it wobbled the fuck out of me had all the old stories and then i did the work and it shifted into something completely different and on board and that hole around it has gone like fucking gone it's not an issue it's the weirdest thing i promise you it's the weirdest thing and it's so different to how i've lived so as well as all the relationship aspect, we're going to look at how do we build the capacity for more. This is vital. It's the piece that's been missing. And we're also going to look at the language. Now, I work, those of you that know me, as a, I'm, I'm a wordsmith, but I've always worked with the magic of words, spells, I call it spelling. We're going to look at the language of money that we use and all of the words that we use around it. And we're going to start to change the, how we relate to the vocabulary, the words that we do. Excuse me, just dribbling. Dribbling with the excitement of it all. The words that we use around money. And start to have more intention around how we speak of money. And watch what fucking happens when we do. Because I tell you what, the amount of times that we can say, I can't afford it, I can't afford this isn't that like what comes out of our mouth so much i i have a dear one dear dear one guaranteed every single conversation with her that comes up at some point and the irony is she has money and she has a really good business but there's an old thing going on what are we telling ourselves all the time all the time and then we're recreating that money pattern and story it's very simple in a strange way so the money keys okay this honest to god i can't tell you how fucking extraordinary this is and as an extra the bonus to this as i've mentioned this will change your relationship to your creativity and free that flow and your sexual energy it's like fucking three for one it's your life force i want you to live in freedom and your power that is behind all the work that i do as a coach and the thing is with money like with all of these places we need both the strategy aspects of it the platform the structure the framework and we need the energetics to be right as well and then boom we can create whatever it is we want to create so this is what we're going to be working with so what do you get you get four weeks together once a week we have a group 90 minutes it's kind of 90 minutes to two hours uh, zoom coaching online you get three beautiful and i'm not fucking just saying this beautiful workbooks for each of them the modules now the ones for the desire keys were about 50 pages each okay loads of journaling prompts loads of reflections loads of exercises loads more information um to support your journey and they're yours to keep Okay, it's basically a book, you know, by the, you've got a book, you've got your whole money energetics book, that's yours. You also get voice notes with me. This is huge because I support you then through the whole process of the month. And there's something about having that time that's really powerful. I've got a closed Facebook group. One more thing around this. I've chosen to do this in December. And you might think, well, she's stupid, isn't she? No. Isn't December the month we get so fraught around money? Maybe it's already happening for you. Fuck, I've got to get all this gear stuff. I can afford it. I've got to do all this stuff. The shadow work. We're still in shadow season around money. is kicking off like a motherfucker. It is the perfect time to catch it all while it's all bobbed at the surface. And to make your relationship with money in this month be absolutely beautiful, new. That people will look at you and go, ooh, get you, you're seeing somebody new. Look how flushed you look. You look really radiant. And you'd be like, yeah, I've got a new lover. Tap your wallet as you say it. So I have put some information about this in the comments. You can go and have a bit more of a read. 
I'm very aware that we are kind of mid-month. So we start, what day are we on today? Sunday. So we have just over a week before the doors close. Okay, so we, the doors close the 28th of November, the Tuesday. We start the Wednesday, the 29th. I think those dates are correct. I am really happy for you to put down a deposit. We can work that out. Minimal deposit to guarantee your place in the group. And then when payday comes, you pay the, the um, what's the word? The other bit. <laughs> what's left? <laughs> the balance, that's it. That's the word I was looking for. So please don't let money stop you if there is a response to doing this program or see what money has to say about it. We can find a way. As I say, I'm aware that we are mid-month. Put a deposit down, your place is yours and you pay when you get paid. That is not a problem at all. If you have questions for me, you'd like to know a little bit more, let me know. You can either send me a direct message or you can put a comment in the comments. Can I have a chat? Chat, please. And I will contact you and we'll get on a call and we'll have a conversation around it. So you're going, okay, well, how much is it? So this program should be 444. <laughs> should be a lot more than that, actually. Next time it will be. These are all the first time I'm running this. I am so excited about it. Okay, it's going to be so fun. We're going to get radically subversive with money. I mean, it's like the taboos. You know, it's a taboo. I'm going to blow our minds with it all. I'm offering it for 397. That is it for the whole month's program. 397. And as I mentioned, put a deposit down, 100 quid, pay when you get paid, and you're in. If you have any questions, let me know. To say private message me let me know in here if you know anybody that you think they'd really get a lot out of this this is empowerment and freedom this is getting to the root foundation around your relationship with money it's not just a story it's a relationship so it's active there is the responsibility it's what we've been looking at in the desire keys it's the biggest thing in life because actually ultimately when we go, no, I want more money, I want to change it, do you? Are you ready for the responsibility of having more money? Are you ready for the responsibility of not saying, I can't afford it, and therefore choosing the things? Are you ready for the responsibility of not living in a scarcity or poverty mindset? Because I tell you what, we kind of go, yeah, yeah, yeah I want this, I want this. But we might not underneath we might be fucking terrified because we don't know what it's like to not live in the familiar so we're going to look at all of this it's a very different money program than i have ever seen and it i can't tell you how much it works and you can ask me anything about my what's changed me or, or give me examples and I, I i will tell you i'll probably share some stuff as we go into this week i there's nothing to hide here there's no gimmicks it's just a radical shift of energy. Okay, my darlings, those of you that are still here, I so appreciate you being here. Oh, an island off Mexico. Oh, close the sacral chakra of the planet. Uh, excuse me, we need to have a chat about this. Oh, I really want to go to Mexico as well. Okay, I love you all. Thank you so much for giving me your time and attention. These are parts of worth and value, so it is appreciated. And I have and am receiving that. Very important. And go well. I will see you all soon. And um, have fun hanging out with your lover. Let me know how it goes, really. And I want to see the money, honey, dance. Bye, darlings. Have a good evening.